And so this is why when Jesus taught, the Bible says Jesus taught in parables. He never taught truth raw. He taught it in parables. And if you do not understand the parable, you won't get to the truth. And you have to sit up there and you have to reread the story. The kingdom of God is likened to a woman. That, and you have to read the story over and over again. You have to read the story over and over again until you realize, well, he says, he's talking about the kingdom. Well, he did say the kingdom's within us. Wait a second. He's talking about me. Okay, so I was able to figure that part out. So now I understand that he's not talking. I know the dogmatics are saying the kingdom of God, you have to wait till you die. It's far, far away. It's somewhere on the, on the uh, it's Mount Zion on the side of the north. It's on the northern side of the hemisphere. You know, you got all this weird stuff in your mind because they have, they have, they have, read, the, they have read it and they have gotten caught up in the clothing and they are more so caught up in the story than the truth that's, that's hidden in the story. And so you have to reread it and read it over again and be able to understand the exo and the eso. And that's what we do here. That's what, that's what we teach here. So when the Bible is talking about the shaft being burnt, it doesn't mean that they're literally starting a fire, even though they do do this in farming. Okay, they do have to do this where they burn the shaft so that the nutrients can go into the soil. That is a real thing that they do. But here in the text, that's not what he's, that's not what he's saying. The shaft represents the physical body. And the physical body has to be burnt by the spirit of God or by what is known as the Christ force. When the Christ force comes into the body, it begins to call something known as a sacred holy fire. And that holy fire represents the light of God or the solar logos, solar logos. And that light begins to fill the body. If thine eye be single, then the body gets filled with the light. That light is the Christ. And as it begins to fill the body, it has an interesting reaction on the shaft of the body or what would be known as the gross body. And what it begins to do is that it begins to transform it through a type of alchemy that begins to take place. Now, in one of my writings, I talk about this process, and I get into, I get into uh, chemistry. And I talk about how this process works, because purification is always done with fire. So you learn the truth, but then the truth, but then the truth has to become purified through the fire of the Holy Ghost has to go through a purification. And purification can only be done through the Spirit. It is the Spirit which brings the fire. And so this is why when the Holy Spirit descends, what do they call it? Tongues of fire. It always is connected with fire. When, April, when Moses is in the Moses is in the wilderness, the backside of the desert, and the bush catches on fire, and the bush is not being consumed. So this was not a literal fire. Hello, are you with me? This was a vision that he was seeing of an astral fire. So the shaft has to be burned. The body has to be consumed with the fire of God, the holy fire. When we get into this, and we might do this at the School of the Prophets, but there's a time in your meditation when you start meditating, and you know, someone might be asking the Christ force, how do, you, how do you really invoke this in you? Well, it's easy. You just ask it to come. That's it. Christ, come, Christ, Christ, appear yourself to me. Show thyself to me. And then you get into your meditations, and you start having these, you'll start having these experiences, and you'll meet him. He'll, he, he will... The Christ will appear to you within you. And this appearance is not going to be a physical appearance. It will appear in a dreamlike state. It will appear in a dreamlike state. You will see synchronicities that will, that will echo it out in the physical dimension. But when he appears to you, he's going to appear to you in a dreamlike state to you. And you will be caught up in the, in the ear. And when you're caught up in the ear, that represents that you have reached a realm 
that you have begun to reach a realm in the third heaven and you are able now to see him. When, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this to a close. When Paul, who does not, who is the first person to experience the second coming, okay, he's the first one that experiences the second coming, of the, uh, the, the, the second coming. And when Paul experiences this, the Bible says that his eyes were blinded. Several days he couldn't see. His carnal eyes was was blinded because the eye became single. And so I want to say this to you as believers and as we get caught up in in the heaven. When this begins to start happening, there's something that will take place with the penile gland or what is known as the single eye or what is known as your eye of understanding. It doesn't say your eyes of understanding. It's still a single eye. And when this begins to take place, this penile gland or glandular system will become a lot more awakened in the body. And as it becomes awakened, you will be able to tune in to the Christ force within you and the body will start becoming filled with light and it will start going through a purification process. Sometimes when I meditate, I can get so hot where I will actually start sweating. It can be in a cold room, but there are meditations like that. And what is happening? The body is becoming purified with the light of the Christ. The body will get heat. Some of the older prophets, they would sit up there, it would be snowing outside, and they would sit outside and they would go into a meditation on top of snow, and by the time they get up, the whole snow thing around them is melted because of the heat that, that, that came through the body. That's enough for tonight.